Welcome to a set of videos that I'm going to be doing over the next six months on building my own retro uh, computer a la 1980s. Basically this is a Zilog um, Z80 chip working at 6 megahertz, uh, not the 3.5 gigahertz that processors move, uh, work today. But basically this was at the heart of a lot of popular computers in the 1980s such as the ZX80, ZX81 and Sinclair Spectrum. Um, but what I'm not going to do is build something as elaborate as that. I'm just going to try and build a retro computer so I can do some experiments on it. So I've devised this board, um, which was suggested on a YouTube channel of Julian um, Illet. Um, I'll put the uh, link to that in the description. But basically... He devised an experiment where you could test this board or test this CPU out with a number of LEDs. So I'm just going to pop this into the breadboard here, which um, I made up. And it, you have to be careful not to bend the pins, but you've got to push it firmly home. Um, hopefully I'll line this up without breaking anything. So you've got to line it up and then... Oh, doesn't want to go in. Here we go. Okay, and push it firmly home. Okay, so that's now locked into the board. And I, this is um, the indent this end is that's pin 1 to 20 and then 21 through to 40 there. So I've got a number of LEDs on here and they're all designed basically um, to test the circuit. For a start, these LEDs are linked to what is called the address bus, the first eight lines of the address bus. Just to show you what's going on then, um, if you look at this diagram here, uh, this is an abstract of the actual uh, pros, uh, processor um, with the pins on the back, and this one is actually what the pin configuration is. So it's got 16 address lines, so it can address up to 64Ks of memory, um, and it also has here um, eight um, uh, data bus lines here to send data to and from memory. So it could address that much memory, um, but there were, it was 8-bit, basically. Um, so these other uh, lines here are all things like power in, power out, and a clock. Now that's important, because I haven't got the clock chip yet. Um, I've got to send off for that. These components all are a few pounds. I think this processor with postage was about six to eight pounds, um, and the clock chip uh, um, is about three pounds, I think. And there's lots of memory chips and um, ROM chips that I've got to buy to build the whole computer. So basically, what I've done is uh, mimicked an experiment which sets all of these to a program which says no instruction. And then each clock cycle, um, that means if you know your um, central processing architecture, it does a von Neumann fetch, decode, execute cycle, and that's one clock cycle. So it goes and fetches an instruction from the data bus. Um, uh, goes down the address bus, brings back the data along the data bus, then it decodes the instruction and then executes whatever that instruction is. And it does that um, uh, basically six million times uh, a second, basically. So what will happen then is this, I've set this instruction, I've hardwired it in. It thinks it's reading from memory, but it isn't. It's just getting the same instructions. I've pulled all these down using resistors. Um, I've also put this little LED here on the clock cycle um, so that every time there's a clock tick, it lights up. Over this side, I've set some other um, pins down so that they don't interfere and they do the process that I want. It stops it from writing back to the address bus and it um, basically only reads from it. This here um, will light up every time there is a write instruction and these LEDs basically um, what it will do is take this instruction and then it'll go to the next slot in memory. So this is in binary, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So basically a count through that. 
So all I've done is uh, added power to it um, via an Arduino board here. So the Arduino is being used. Now, in his video, he used a 555 timer um, chip to actually um, make the processor do its job because it has to use an oscillating quartz crystal to time it. Um, much like uh, an assembly line conveyor belt to do one thing at a methodical uh, speed. But I didn't have one of those, so what I did was I wrote a little um, C program in uh, on my Arduino here, which actually sends through pin 13 here down to the actual clock um, pin there, uh, a pulse. Now I've only got it to do uh, 10 milliseconds so it slows it right down so you can see what's happened. Imagine if it was working at something like 6 billion instructions a second you wouldn't actually um, or million sorry in this case you wouldn't actually see anything it would be just a blur of lights basically. So I'm going to switch it on and we're going to see how it works. So I'm just going to power up the Arduino. Remember all the Arduino is doing is providing the power and um, it's acting as a clock chip. That's all. So it comes on and it started counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, or 15 and that's it it goes on like that so basically it counts up in binary i got a bit out of a sequence then but remember it's going to count right up now the only reason i've got seven leds on there because above that up to 16 remember it's a 16 bit address bus um it's used by a different register in the computer so it does other things while it's waiting for that level to be counted so it would the lights would just flicker and they wouldn't be meaningless Remember this one here is showing you the clock rate and it's, it's vastly slower than it would do. That would be a blur if you, and it would just look like it was on if it was running at the proper CPU speed. And this one is about four times slower. It's just every time it writes an instruction um, that will flash on. So that's it basically. That's the first component in my retro computer. I'm going to send off for a timer chip some um, static RAM and a EEPROM chip which I can program um, to devise some other experiments. And later on I'm going to look at some I.O. chips so that I can write to a liquid crystal display screen, maybe a sound chip um, and also get some input from either toggle switches or a rudimentary keyboard that I may try and make myself. Okay, so thank you for watching.